Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this 45 pound draw weight sling bow. So as you can see it's a sling bow, so it's powered by rubber here and this has got four layers of some tapered theraband gold on either side. So that's got a lot of draw weight which is easier enough to propel these two bolts which I made. You also may have noticed that I've fitted an optical air rifle scope on the front and I think this has got a times four zoom. So let's see how you make it. First cut out and transfer the design onto some 12mm thick plywood. There will be a link to the design in the description of this video. Now you need to cut out the design. I'm going to be using a power jigsaw and that will save a lot of time rather than just using a hacksaw or a normal saw. So I've got both of the outer parts cut out and they're pretty symmetrical so now I'm going to get the final middle piece cut out. So this is the piece which is going to be housing all of the trigger mechanism and everything. So this is the finished stock cut out and here's how it should look. So there should be the first outer piece like this, then you should take it off and here is the middle piece with the trigger mechanism all cut out and the way the trigger is going to work is there's going to be a pivot pin all the way through there and then the string is going to hook back over that notch and then when you pull the trigger it will rotate like that and release the string and fire the bolt. So now I'm going to shape the trigger. So now that I've shaped my trigger mechanism so that I'm happy with it and it's curved here where the string's going to sit on the notch and also it's curved where I'm going to pull my finger with it. So now I clamp all of three pieces of the slingshot crossbow stock into place so that I'm happy with them and the trigger mechanism fits fine in there so everything will be working once I pin it together and then I'm going to drill 3.5mm thick holes all the way through the um, wood so that then I can put these pins through to hold it in place. So now with all of these pins in the stock the pieces of wood can't be shaken about so they're not wobbling about at all but you could still pull them apart if you try. So now I'm going to drill the pivot going all the way through the trigger mechanism. So now when I pull the trigger, once I've put this pin through it, now when I pull the trigger it works just like this and it pivots like this so the string will hook over this notch here and it will be pulling this way and then you'll pull it like that and then the crossbow bolt will fire. Now I need to get all of these pieces glued together. To glue the pieces together I'm just going to be using a two part epoxy. So the glue is set and the stock's held together really nicely. Now I'm going to cut off all the excess from the nails on both sides and then start to rasp the stock into shape. So I've just gone and finished shaping everything up and as you can see it's all shaped quite nicely and it feels really nice with the handle part over here but also it's really really rough and scratched with lots of deep scratches and chips in the wood so now I'm just going to go over it with a normal metal working file and try and get some of the deep rust scratches out of it. Also remember that you've got to leave this bit flat because a piece of wood's going to be joining on here and also don't do anything with this piece yet. So this is what the stock looks like once I've got most of the deep scratches out. So now I'm just going to clamp on a large piece of wood onto this front bit here and glue it on with the two parts epoxy. Right, so I've glued this big piece of wood on the front and as you can see it's dead straight and it's definitely going straight down the barrel and that's going to really help. 
So now I'm just going to roughly shape up this front bit so that it looks a bit nicer than it does now. So I fell this bit down so that it looks quite cool and that it joins flat onto the wood here. And also I've gone and attached another bit of wood onto the bottom just to stabilize it and make it stronger. And I've done that using three bolts and three screws. Now I'm just going to file both of these pieces so that they're flush with each other. And then I'm going to file off some of this darker layer on the top and the darker layer on the bottom. So I've shaped this all to how I'd like it. Now I'm going to start slowly sanding my way up to 400 grit. So with the sandpaper, if you start with a really, really low grit, I'm starting with just 60. And then you just rub it on the wood until you're not removing any more scratches anymore. Then you move up to the next grit. So an hour and a half later, and I finally got everything roughly up to 400 grit and I'm pretty happy with it at the moment. Now I'm gonna make the scope mount for where I'm gonna attach my scope. So for the scope I'm gonna be using uh, optical zoom air rifle scope, which I've got, and this is just gonna be mounted on using this piece of wood, using the original mountings for the scope, and it's just gonna be mounted on the top here. So this is the finished scope mount now, and here it is, and I've filed in this giant notch here so that there's still room for the trigger mechanism so that it's really easy to load the trigger and you'll figure out how why I did that later. So now I need to make the guides for the bolts which are going to be fired by the slingshot crossbow. So basically I'm just going to be using these two pieces of wood either side of the wooden dowel which I'm going to be using as the bolt. If I put these on properly and straight then they'll guide the bolt as it fires. So as you can see here I've just got the first of the guides attached and I did that by just drawing the centre line along and hammering in some small nails along the way and it's really really straight now I'm going to attach the second guide. So I just did the second guide and now it looks like this and it works really well because this is the dowel which I'm going to be using for the bolt and it'll fire and just slide down here and hopefully be really accurate. So as you can see I've just put these two bits of wood on the front a quarter of the way down the barrel and I've put a bolt all the way through and then a screw on either one so that then what's going to happen is after the slingshot crossbow fires its shot the bands will come and hit here and then you'll just pull them back again. So now what I've done is I filed a piece of wood like this so that it's wide enough to span across like this and then it's got this notch right in here for a toothbrush head to fit in like this. So you may be wondering what the toothbrush head is for and what happens is it goes on the top like that and then the bolt um, goes underneath and then the toothbrush head holds the bolt in place until the shot has been fired. So now I'm just going to glue the toothbrush head onto this bit. So I've glued in the toothbrush here, now I'm going to screw on this piece of wood. Right, so now that I've screwed this bit on, you will load the bolt like this, and this is the wooden dowel which I'm going to be using as the bolt, and then it's in place like this, and it's quite hard to move, and it's definitely not going to be coming up the top. So this is the front part that I'm going to cut out of some strong plywood to go on the front where the bands are going to attach. Just like the trigger mechanism, this part is going to be under quite a lot of strain, so you need to cut it out of some really, really strong plywood. I'm using some 18mm multiplex plywood. So again, I'm just going to be using a jigsaw to cut it out. So I just got this cut out. So I'm just going to start shaping this with rasps so that it's curved and it looks nicer and also so that it's more symmetrical. So I've shaped it quite nicely here. And as you can see, it's flat in the middle bit here because this is going to be where it's joining onto the front bit of the crossbow. And also, I've carved these really, really gradual curves in the front here. And these are where the bands are going to attach. So now I'm going to file some grooves in for the bands to attach just under. So for this step, you need to use a circular rack tail file or rasp. I'm going to be using a rasp first, then smoothing it out with a file. So, and then what you need to do is you need to go half a millimetre under where the end of the gradual curve is and then start to file 
a groove into it and you need to go half the rascal file deep into the wood. So now I've done those notches in both sides and this is good to take on some bands but first I need to attach it to the front of the crossbow. So I'm just going to attach it using screws one at a time. So I finished putting all the screws onto the front and I probably went a bit overkill with it, but it's good. And it's really, really firm and this is definitely not gonna come off. So this is what the finished weapon looks like. Now I just need to make and attach the bands. So the bands that I'm using, as you can see, is TheraBand Gold. And you can buy this from most physio stores, most gyms and most hospitals, but also off Amazon and eBay. You can also use office rubber, but for a more powerful weapon like a slingbow, you probably want to use TheraBand Gold and it gives you the best performance out of all. So this is the size of the bands which I'm going to be cutting out. They're 22 centimeters long and at the fork side they're two centimeters wide and at the pouch side they're 1.5 centimeters wide so this means that they're not that tapered but they'll still give quite high speed but they'll also last quite long so i think it's quite a good compromise and i'm going to be having six of these cut out so it's going to be three bands per side and hopefully this will give me quite a large draw width. so for cutting out i'm going to be using this rotary cutter here you can also use a good pair of scissors, but you need to be careful that you don't leave little nicks in the TheraBand as you cut it out because they will tear much more easily than a flat edge done by a rotary cutter. So now I've got all six of these cut out and they feel like they're going to hopefully give me quite a heavy draw weight. And now we're going to make the cord which is going to fire the bolt, the bowstring if you want to call it that, and I'm going to be using some really strong paracord. So first just tie a simple overhand knot like this with the longer string on this side and then put the shorter string back through the knot like that. Now pull the knot tight and tie a figure of eight knot in this shorter end of the string. So once you've done tied the figure of eight knot like that, you should be able to pull this loop and it should be strong. Now you need to tie a figure of eight knot about a centimeter from where this last knot was. Then once you've done that, tie another one four centimeters away from it. Then do this exact same loop, but on the other side, the exact same width apart from this figure of eight knot just on this side. So once you've done that, you should be able to pull on both of these loops really, really hard, and they shouldn't give at all. All they should do is just tighten tighter and tighter. Now cut off the excess string here and then cover some of the, cover these two knots in super glue. Once the super glue sets, these knots are going to be impossible to undo. So while the glue is setting on the other knots, we're going to make the other bit of string which is going to hook back over the trigger. So again, you're going to need some really, really strong paracord and you're going to want to tie a overhand knot in there. Now put the long bit of string all the way through and pull the knot tight. You want it to be so that when you pull the knot, this bit gets even tighter. Now just tie another overhand knot over here just to make sure that the other knot does not come undone. The loop in this string should be big enough so that it goes all the way over here and then you can tighten it around the figure of eight knot like that. Now tie exactly the same knot on the other side and then tighten it around this figure of eight knot. So once it's done, it should look something like this. Now, before you super glue these knots that you've just done here, you need to make sure that when you pull back the bands, it'll be like this, and the bands are gonna attach like that, and then this will attach over the hook in the trigger, like this, and when you pull it, you need to make sure that this bit is still straight, and then if the figure of eight knots are too far apart, this bit will be almost impossible for you to notch the bolt on because it'll be all wobbled about. So if I load the bolt into here, then while this is pulling, I'll be able to just notch the bolt like that and then when I pull the trigger, it will fire. You also need to make sure that you curve this piece here. So now let's attach the bands to the loops in, these, in the string. So first what you're going to need is four long thin strips of TheraBand. Then you take the thinner end of your three pieces of TheraBand and then you put it through the loop. Then you pull one and a half centimetres of it through the loop and bend it over like that. So then get one of your strips of TheraBand and start to tightly wrap it around 
the folded over piece and around the bands. So when you've only got enough TheraBand left to wrap it around twice, put a piece of string over like that and then have it as a loop like this and then put it around once and then another time and pull it through the string and then pull the string tight until you pull that piece back through and all the way through. So if you then repeat this on the other side, you've got a good band set. This attachment method is really strong and it's never gonna come undone if you do it right. So now let me show you how you attach it to the fork. So first put the bands flat around the fork. There should be about half a centimeter excess just under where you filed in that notch. So then grab another long thin piece of TheraBand gold and start to wrap it round. Use the exact same method with the string to pull it through. Now repeat that on the other side and you've got a working band set. And now the slingshot crossbow is ready to shoot. So these are the two bolts which I've created for the crossbow. You can also use cr commercial crossbow bolts or arrows, but I don't have any of them. There are loads of tutorials up on YouTube on how to make arrows and bolts, so I'm not going to show you how to make them in this video, but I may show you how to make them in another video if I get enough requests. So this first bolt has just got a sharpened nail glued into it there, and it's got some flights on the back made out of duct tape, and it's got a notch for the string to clip into. The second bolt's got some thin stainless steel as a broad head on the front and this bolt's probably the most lethal of the two and it doesn't need fletchings or anything because it's very front heavy so it will fly straight and it's also got a notch on the back for the string to clip into. As well as that I increased the rubber to four bands per side and as well as that I pretty much sighted in the air rifle scope so that it's accurate. So this is how you load the weapon, you put your foot on the stirrup piece like that and then you grab the bands and you pull them all the way back and up over this trigger mechanism and hook them on like that. Then you grab your bolt, you push it forwards and then you notch it. Then you just point it at whatever you want to shoot and fire. So thanks for watching this video guys, I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did please hit the like button and subscribe. Also if you want to see a video of me shooting this weapon a bit more, click on the link below in the description and there will be a shooting video of this weapon.